volcanic smoke of Europe for the world to fear. Piracy, but not the piracy of old which had a flag, strikes from beneath the seas. Submarines attack. No one submarines, no ones. This is an undeclared war in the Mediterranean. Something new in the battle corridors of time. But Russia in its might accuses Italy bluntly, and Stalin salutes his modern legions, as from internal strife Russia faces outward. Britain's worry burdens Anthony Eaton, foreign secretary, burdens Leon Blum of France. For war is in the look of this, and Nuremberg with a million Germans gathered, here's Hitler cast his lot with Italy in the lineup. As for Mussolini, he scorns the Russian accusation and in Sicily reviews his war machine, a formidable outfit. Here are pictures passed by the Italian censor. Veterans are here who fought in Spain, that powder keg of all this danger. Here destruction rumbles, though still unleashed. Shots that shake the financial centers of the world. Wall Street feels them in the United States, and so in Europe does the force of Paris and old Threadneedle Street in London. For people's money runs from normal investments in the face of fear of war. But still the pirates strike and show no colors. And now the United States warns its shipping to shun Mediterranean waters or take the risk. Twenty ships of various nations attacked, a dozen sunk. Now American warships are told to clear for action if they must. And the world wonders if world war seems like these. Biggest political story of the year, the Roosevelt, Churchill, and Stalin meeting at Tehran. Three men coordinating the strategy of three nations, setting a long, hard path toward victory. 1943's biggest battle news was Stalingrad. At Stalingrad, the Sixth German Army and the myth of Nazi invincibility were forever smashed. The initiative passed from German to Russian hand. Two-thirds of the areas the enemy once held have now been regained by the Russians. In the, in the Mediterranean, the enemy also was forced to shift from offensive to defensive. He was pushed back all the way from El Alamein to the gates of Rome. Greatest headlines of the century. Line Berlin, April 30th, 5. In a moment, the story. Snuggled high in the Bavarian Alps stood a retreat known as Berchtesgarten. For a decade, it served as the home of a man whose demented brain was to bring nothing but suffering to the world and its peoples. Here, Adolf Hitler could relax away from the burning glare of the public spotlight. Like any well-to-do landowner on a Sunday afternoon, he could receive honored friends and business associates like Dr. Joseph Goebbels and Joachim von Ribbentrop, and occasionally a quiet little man wearing glasses named Heinrich Kimber. A lovely hostess, Eva Braun, would preside over the little gatherings with charm and good humor. An innocent-looking little group who between them were responsible for the murder of more than seven million people. From little friendly socials like these came the plans for the inhuman bestiality of the concentration camps, murder mills that were erected to carry out a cold-blooded genocide of a race of people. Politically, Adolf Hitler had been spawned in the chaos following World War I. The Austrian house painter plunged into an inflation-ridden Germany at a time when she was vulnerable to almost anything. The swastika became an emblem of Germany's future. After a brief nine-month imprisonment, the little man with the mustache came back stronger than ever. His natural gift of oratory whipped an unruly mob of early followers into a powerful machine of fear and hate. 
with an able assist from an astute student of human psychology, Dr. Joseph Goebbels, all resistance for his grab for power faded away. By 1933, Adolf Hitler was Germany, and the world watched his noisy machinations with growing fear and anxiety. And with good reason, 1939 arrived and with it came the tragic invasion of Poland. The German dictator had given the long threatened signal for his panzer divisions to launch their blitzkrieg. In a matter of days, the swastika had plunged the world into total war. But six years later, with the hated Russian troops just blocks away from his Berlin underground bunker, Adolf Hitler was forced to choose death by his own hand rather than face the consequences and the humility of utter defeat. His once proud legions had fallen into the hands of his sworn enemies. The conqueror had been conquered. None were left to mourn the passing of a man who had committed the venal sin of murder, not once, but untold millions of times. Adolf Hitler, born April 20th, 1889, died April 30th, 1945.